Hello. Today we'll see how to configure an Alusic conveyor belt with the new Alusic configurator. First of all, we enter our credentials. Once we've logged in, we'll see our members page where we can create a new estimate or see our history. This lets you filter it and search through previous estimates, either by number, name or product type. Let's create a new estimate. The configuration page will appear, where we have a serial number, a space to enter a name or a brief description of the item, In this case, it will be Alusic Test Configuration. Which we can also use in the future to filter searches. The second step is the life cycle. At the moment, we are still in the draft stage. Where we can set our configurations and make changes. Once all the data is confirmed, we can move on to Ready for Proposal, which will put our configuration in standby as we wait for confirmation from our customers or any potential future changes. Once everything has been approved, we can move on to Offered. When the offer and the configuration will be locked, and it will communicate with our internal sales system, which will send you the offer very quickly. For any users who are not yet customers, the last button to click on will be Request Offer. This button will redirect you to a message with your configuration attached, where you have to fill in your company details so that our sales office can complete the procedure. We also have a little panel to the side with reviews where we can see any changes made to this configuration. The first information to enter will be our details. Today, we'll create an offer for Alusic. We can now select the product to configure. Today, the selected product will be the straight line conveyor belt. Once we click on it, the real configuration page will appear. On the left, we find all the configuration steps. The basic data, the motor, the belt, the legs and the guide rails. While on the right side, we have a small collapsible panel with a summary of the configuration, which we can keep open or closed. Let's start with the configuration belt direction one way or two way. If certain questions are sometimes difficult to understand, click on the name of the question. So in this case, direction, and we'll get a few pictures or explanations so we have a better understanding of the request. So one way works in just one direction and two ways works in both. We can also make our choice directly from the pictures, so from this diagram, or by returning to the configuration directly with the choices. You do not have to confirm all the data, but this means that it may vary depending on the following information, so the configurator will be free to change, for example, the weight, speed or dimensions. However, 
If we confirm this data, it cannot be changed automatically by the configurator. We have to confirm any changes. So here we fill in our details. Remembering that we have a few pictures available, so we get a better understanding. For example, the width of a belt. Once we have selected the size of our belt, we have to select the type of motor. So again, here if it's not essential, we can leave it free so that the configurator can choose the best solution for us. However, if we have to use a certain type of motor, we have to confirm the required version. In this case, it's a direct drive motor. Rolling knife edge idler to allow material with a smaller diameter to enter. Rolling knife edge on both sides, so a smaller diameter on entering and leaving. In this case, as you can see, the yes option is blocked out and not available. However, if our layout requires one, and we have to have a rolling knife edge idler on both sides, we click on yes, and the configurator will show us any conflicting choices. It will suggest that we change the type of motor from direct drive to central drive and that there are also must be a rolling knife edge idler at the entrance and not just at the exit. If we accept these suggestions, our choices will be amended and we'll have our configured result. But if we refuse these changes, we'll not be able to have a rolling knife edge idler on both sides. However, you have to make these choices based on your requirements. Choosing the size is slightly more restrictive. If you don't yet know our products and all our range well, I would recommend leaving this choice free so that the configurator can select the best solution for us. While if you're already an expert with our systems, you can also directly choose the size you want. The type of flange, short or standard, the material of the sliding surface, galvanized or stainless steel. If you want an intersection on the conveyor belt, that's to say a cylinder or a switch that can move the material in a perpendicular direction to our belt. This is a very important detail to know because it greatly influences the choice of our size. Product buildup, that's to say if products build up on the conveyor belt. This information is also very important to choose the best belt, which we will see later on. Once we have filled in the basic data, we move on to the next step, the motor. The position of the motor in relation to the movement of the belt, right or left. For the power of the motor, the configurator will suggest the minimum size for the data we've entered. The weight, speed and size. But you are free to oversize the motor. In this case, we will confirm 0.22 kilowatts as suggested. For the gear motor, the configurator will also suggest the recommended minimum size here, but you are free to oversize it. In this case, we want to oversize the gear motor. So we'll choose a larger size. Now we move on to choosing the belt. A food belt or not? In this case, we want a food conveyor belt. We'll obviously have a smaller choice as we've chosen a food belt and we'll choose white polyurethane. 
If you have to use a belt that is not on the list, given that it only contains the most common belts on sale, you can also choose other as an option. Other will not restrict our choice of material or color of the belt, so you need to let the Alusic technical department know this information afterwards, so you can find the best solution. The type of connecting joints for the belt. Welded or a mechanical joint. Whether or not you want flights welded onto the belt to transport the material. Obviously, in this case, flights are not available because they are not compatible with the central drive motor we chose earlier. At the bottom, we'll find a summary of the dimensions of the chosen belt, so the length and width. We can always find this summary in any case at the side of our little panel, where we'll find the weight, speed and size of the conveyor belt, the type of motor we chose and the type of belt. We can now configure the legs, whether we want them or not, the height of the legs, from under the supporting feet to above the belt. The final configuration step is the guide rails, whether you only want them on the right side, only on the left side or on both sides. And we can also choose the type of cap an end cap or an entrance cap. In this case, we'll choose an input entrance and the end cap at the exit. As we've chosen a white belt, in this case, we'll also choose a white guide rail. Our configuration is finished. We only have to confirm and save it. By clicking on Next, we can still decide if we want to get an offer for the loose material as a kit or if we want it assembled as a finished conveyor belt. In this case, we want to get the offer as a kit. We can finish and save it, so we click on OK and return to our home page. We see that under Products we have the configuration of our conveyor belt. We can delete it, copy it or even change it. By clicking on this black icon, we can generate an itemized list with the codes, descriptions and number of parts in our configuration. We can have a Word file with a small document of our choices. the type of belt, dimensions, weight, speed, type of belt, motor and so on. With the other red icon, CAD, we can generate a zip file with the technical drawings of the configuration we've just done. The PDF, DWG and STEP. Once again here we can generate documents and in a few minutes we'll get the zip file to save on our PC. Our zip file has been generated so we can save it on our PC. Inside we'll find a 3D PDF, a 2D PDF a 2D DWG, a STEP, a parasolid and an e-drawings all in 3D. Let's have a look at the result of our configuration. This is the result of our configuration. A conveyor belt with a central drive motor, two rolling knife edges at the entrance and exit, two guide rails and legs. If you need any information, you can contact your relevant agent or our technical department. You can find other tutorial videos on our Facebook, 
Instagram and YouTube pages or on our website. Have a nice day.